You have a video interview coming up and you want the strategies that will help you to build a similar connection as if you were in person and learn ways to show that you are perfect for the role and completely stand out from all of those other candidates. I will be sure to deliver on all of that and more in this video. This is Self Made Millennial. I'm Madeline Mann, and in this video, you'll learn a tactical approach that will make you appear confident, warm, and relaxed on video. And then I will share a strategy to leave an incredible impression well beyond your competition. If you've seen my video on the Banff Binder, I'm taking that advice up a notch, including we will walk through a real world example of a video interview to show how Elizabeth landed a job amidst the pandemic using this exact approach. Okay, so first let's talk about your setup. Some of these things may be a little bit obvious, but others, oh my gosh, you will be so glad you're thinking about this now. Computer. Ideally use a computer for your video call instead of a phone. It looks more professional. And then stack it up on several books so that you're not looking down at the camera. It subconsciously sends a signal that you are looking down on the interviewer. You want them to see you as their equal. And so there's some low-key psychology associated with all of this. So make sure to get that puppy eye level. Notifications. Nothing gets your nerves going haywire quite like someone you know deciding to send you eight texts in a row while you're interviewing. Set your phone to do not disturb and create a guest account on your computer and then log into that for interviews. That should eliminate any notifications from your normal computer that they may throw at you. Backup technology. Should your computer go on strike while you're in the interview, have another computer a phone or a tablet nearby if you have another one in your household. And provide them, the interviewer, with your phone number if they don't already have it, just in case you should get disconnected, and then y'all can just chat the old fashioned way. Ask your household to hop off of the internet during the duration of your interview, or at least just not be streaming video. Additionally, practice logging on to your phone's hotspot should your local Wi Fi betray you. Screensaver. Hey, I'm all for eco mode, saving energy, there's no planet B, but we have to turn off all of those settings when we are interviewing. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten my screensaver mid video call and I have to sign back into my computer. If that happens, play it super cool, maybe even practice that happening before you get into your interview, but also do your best to turn off those settings ahead of time. Background. For the background behind you, aim for the least amount of clutter possible. Notice what is in your background. I know I have uh, a desk in the bedroom and it's usually only once I log on to the video call that I notice the closet door is wide open and it does not look so good. So luckily I often remember to then close it before starting the call. Lighting. Straight on lighting to your face is so important. Weird lighting from above above or below makes it look like you're about to tell a spooky ghost story. And then lighting from only one side or the other makes it you look like Two-Face. If you can't position yourself in front of a window, grab a few lamps or invest in one of those handy dandy ring lights. It's an investment that's typically worth it. They help you to look great and you can also get some affordable ones for anything between like 20 to 60 US dollars. Clothing. Avoid clothing with patterns and colors that are the same color as your background, as you could then look like a floating head. I actually stopped wearing white in these videos since this chair and that wall is white. So consider a solid contrasting outfit. Earbuds. Earbuds are a great thing to have to limit audio complications. Water bottle. Have a water bottle nearby in case your voice gets hoarse and also in case very likely scenario in my life of knocking over the water cup with a grand gesture or due to general spazziness. Having a bottle with a gap minimizes disruptions. Video conferencing software. Look at the link they sent you for the video conferencing software and do a full dress rehearsal on that platform. They are all a bit different and the powerful strategy you'll learn later in this video will require that you work your way through the software seamlessly. Ask a family member or a friend to be on the other end. Try different controls, choosing the speaker views, especially if there is more than one interviewer, muting, sharing the screen, logging on and off. Now, let's talk about how to appear friendly and confident. Practice 
looking into the camera instead of looking into the center of the screen. The person on the other side will feel more connected to you because it'll feel like you're looking at directly in their peepers. Smile a little more than you normally would and pep up your energy. The video may add 10 pounds, but it subtracts three cups of coffee. So you will come across a lot less energetic. Practice all of these moves with a friend on the other end and choose your most honest friend. They will tell you if you're coming off confident or like a grinning buffoon. Make sure you have practice answering interview questions and that you have your key stories that you want to tell and make sure they are well rehearsed. I will link the tell me about yourself worksheet to help you sketch out your answer to that question because you know that one is coming at you. And if you answer it poorly, it sets the tone for the rest of the interview. So I will link it in the comments and in the description. Okay, okay, good prep so far champ, but that's kid stuff. Now let's blow their minds. How do we radiate competence through the screen and get that sitting ovation? Here are some tried and true approaches. We have Elizabeth here who landed a job during the pandemic and is a viewer of Self Made Millennial. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, I come, came across your channel some time ago and I was watching so many of your videos in the days leading up to my interview. So thank you for putting out that really quality content. I actually think I watched the entire playlist of the questions to ask in an interview and was like taking notes to help me be prepared and feel prepared. So thank you very much for your content. I'm definitely sharing with my friends. You absolutely rocked your video interviews recently, which landed you the job. So tell us, what did you have in front of you during your interview? I was applying for a fundraiser role in higher education. And so what I wanted to have available to reference if I needed was my resume and cover letter in case they asked a specific question about it. I had my questions typed out, the ones I was gonna ask the interview panel at the end. And then I also had a cheat sheet for my star stories. So just some keywords to get me going and I also made sure I had like a timer right there so I could see the clock. How did you reference your notes without seeming too rehearsed or unnatural? Really the notes were there mostly as a comfort blanket knowing that I had something to look at and I would be okay to say actually do you mind if I just check my notes and I'll just see here that I have you know that was 1987 that I did that role so I, I knew it was there if I needed it and I also know that it's not uncommon to look away from the camera once in a while during the interview. And now, Elizabeth, you did the BAM Finder approach in your interview, but the digital version. And for any of you who are unfamiliar with the term BAM Finder, I have a full video where I walk through how to create a portfolio for any profession. And that is going to be a great tool for you to watch in tandem with this video. So I will link it in the comments and in the description. Um, but Elizabeth, can you walk us through what you did? So what I had is several work examples open on my screen, ready to pull up depending on what question I was asked. I knew they could work for several different questions. And then when they asked the question, I would answer in high level summary first. And then I would say something like, in fact, I happen to have a document that shows how I organize this event. It's our running sheet that I use with the volunteer team leaders. Would you be okay if I shared that right now on the screen and then I can walk you through some more detail? And then they might be a little surprised and they'll say yes, and then share the screen, make sure they can see it okay, and then walk through the document briefly. And then I share the screen before the very end of the answer. So at the end of the answer is where tying into relevance, passion about connecting it back to the organization. So that was some of my approach. And I do have a couple tips for when you're actually sharing the document. So first thing is make sure you don't scroll too fast. And to be mindful, the interviewers may not be able to follow the cursor. So using some like verbal direction sort of like, hey, you'll see under column three, it says such and such. And then secondly, just to make sure to unshare uh, soon enough so that they're not looking at a boring document for too long. I love your approach. You are the MVP. Can you show us an example of this in action? Okay, so here's an example that would work for any question to do with like, so tell us a little bit about your experience working with volunteers or planning an event. So my answer would be, Sure. I actually was a music department coordinator overseas and I worked with a lot of volunteers. We had 
one annual conference a year where we trained musicians. Around 400 musicians came from across the UK. And so I helped coordinate team leaders to plan leading up to the day and organize logistics on the day as well. So I actually happened to have a run sheet that I used with all the team leaders on my computer. Would you be okay if I shared my screen right now and then I could walk you through some of the details? Yes, go right ahead. You'll see here that my name's at the top. So I was organizing logistics and coordinating the volunteer team leaders. There's around 10 volunteer team leaders, all different areas, around 100 volunteers total. And the scope of the event was we had several music performances and keynotes, some breakout sessions and a concert. So a lot of moving parts, which is what I love about event organizing. And then you'll notice here uh, that we have it broken down by time, team, details. We use this run sheet as our agenda for all the planning meetings leading up to the event. So every team could see where they were and what they were doing. This was definitely shifting as we went along. So it was important we have a document very detailed. And then you'll notice here at the top that each seminar had multiple breakout sessions multiple venues, multiple locations. So it was really important that as volunteer leads, we had ways of communicating, whether phone or uh, other methods. So that was part of the approach that I used. What the event showed me is I loved leading volunteers. I loved the coordinating and the administration and all those details, right? And it affirmed for me that that's the type of thing I wanna keep doing in my career. My boss gave me such a good compliment after. He said that that was the first conference in some time where he was able to totally relax and just like enjoy the event, knowing that I had all the details covered and the team leads could come to me if they needed. So that, that just affirmed that this is the type of thing I want to keep doing, which frankly is why I applied to the role. I saw that you have two events, I think, next year. So I know that I want to bring these same skills to your organization and help all your volunteers like be a part of bringing forward a great successful event. Phenomenal, such a tangible example. And what was the reaction? At the end of the interview, when I got the job, I made sure to follow up with all the panelists and there each one separately told me their first impression was the ease of use of the technology, sharing the screen and how they were absolutely floored in their conversation after the interview was that they should really consider hiring me, especially in the state that we're in where working remotely is the new normal for now. It was important to demonstrate this seamless experience that's very personable and mimics the in-person experience as much as possible, right? That is so great. What I love about this example is it's nothing elaborate. You just gave them a real glimpse at a work sample and what it would feel like to work with you. I that's magic. And thank you so much for coming on Self Made Millennial. To come, happy to share my tips and hopefully to help other people too. Make sure to grab that Tell Me About Yourself worksheet. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. You've got this. Wi Fi high five.